the changes that occur in the upper motor neuron lesions are the weakness with changes in muscle tone, muscle bulk and stretch reflex. We have done in other videos the muscle tone, spasticity and rigidity. In this video we will discuss the stretch reflex. The stretch reflex. So what's a stretch reflex? How does it occur and what are the structures involved in a uh, stretch reflex? When the muscle is stretched or a tendon is tapped, it contracts. The sense organ is muscle spindle, which is and it is a monosynaptic reflex. That is, when the impulse goes through, it directly innervates the motor neuron to cause muscle contraction. There is no interdental neuron in between, and the reflex is ipsilateral. It goes on the same side. The example of the stretch reflexes are the bicep reflex C5 and C6, tricep C7, C8, knee jerk L2, 3 and 4 in which the quadriceps is contracted and in ankle jerk which is S1, gastrocnemius is contracted. And what's the reaction time? The time taken from action to reaction in, a, in case of knee jerk is 20 to 25 milliseconds. So what's a muscle spindle? Muscle spindle is present in the interfacial fibers and consists of the 10, 2 to 10 muscle fibers. The ends of the capsule of a spindle are attached to a tendon and are contractile whereas the center is not contractile because it doesn't have actin and myosin. See the spindles are supplied by the gamma motor neurons. There are two types of interfusal fibers, nuclear back fibers and the nuclear chain fiber. The nuclear back fibers have multiple nuclei. The nuclear chain fibers are thin, short and their ends are attached to the nuclear back fibers. The two sensory endings wrap around the nuclear bag and chain fiber. They are fast conducting 1A fibers. When the spindles are stimulated as a, and the action potential and generated the 1A fiber takes the impulse from the spindle to directly to the motor neuron to alpha motor neuron to cause muscle contraction and these 1A fibers are myelinated and highly sensitive to the stimulus and fast conducting. So they are located near the ends of the interfusal fibers or group 2 sensory fibers. Group 1 fibers that they wrap around the spindles, they are stimulated by muscle stretch and by gamma neurons. And as I told that these lack actin, the center lack actin and myosin, therefore they don't contract. The ends contract. The other fibers, the 1B fibers, they arise from the Golgi tendon organs and are stimulated by muscle contraction more than mainly and more than by the muscle stretch but also stimulated by muscle stretch and they inhibit the alpha motor neuron through the interdental neuron. They stimulate the interdental neuron which are inhibitory. These inhibitory neuron inhibits the alpha motor neuron so the contraction is star is stopped. So there is a difference between the 1A and 1B fibers. The 1A fibers they directly stimulates the alpha motor neuron to cause contraction. The 1B fiber they innervates the alpha uh, interdental neuron or inhibitory neuron that innervates the alpha motor neuron to cause inhibition. The 1A fiber also sends a tweak to the inhibitory neurons when the it contracts the agonist, the antagonist should relax. So that's why this is how it relaxes the antagonist. The gamma motor neurons are of two types: the gamma dynamic that innervates the ends of the nuclear back fibers and the gamma static innervates the ends of the nuclear chain fibers. So how gamma motor neurons are controlled? Gamma motor neurons are inhibited by the pyramidal corticospinal tracts and they are excited by the reticular formation activating system and the in inhibited by the inhibitory system and the vestibular spinal tract also stimulate them and also the cutaneous sensory receptors. A stimulation or noxious stimulus over the skin causes 
contraction and stimulation of the gamma motor neuron. How spindles are inhibited? The descending fibers from the pyramidal tract end on the spindles and inhibit it, thus decreases the stretch reflex. When the spindles are stretched, action potential is generated in the sensory nerve. This initiates reflex contraction of the extrafusal fiber. The spindle then stops firing and the muscle stops contracting. The stimulation of the gamma neuron contracts and shortens the ends of the interfusal nuclear back fiber. This deforms the nuclear chain fibers and stimulates the 1A fiber that causes reflex contraction. Thus, muscle can be contracted by stimulation by a alpha neuron and also by a gamma neuron which stimulates via stretch reflex. Both dynamic and static gamma efferent neuron increase the sensitivity of spindles. The gamma efferent system is regulated by the descending tract from the brain so the stretch reflex is also modulated by the higher center. So this is the inhibitory center, inhibitory control from the pyramidal tract to the gamma neuron. Other factors that influence the gamma efferent discharges are number one, anxiety. Anxiety increases the gamma discharges, so hyperreflexia in anxiety. And number two, irritant application in the skin stimulates ipsilateral spindles. So what are the brain areas that inhibit the stretch reflex? The brain areas that inhibit the stretch reflex are motor cortex, the pyramidal tract, the basal ganglia, cerebellum and reticular inhibitory areas. And what are the brain areas that facilitate the stretch reflex? They are reticular facilitatory areas and vestibular nuclei. The stretch reflex increases in upper motor neural lesion with positive Babinski. The stretch reflex increases in extrapyramidal disorders with negative Pavisky. The stretch reflexes decreases in lower motor neuron lesion with negative Pavinsky and remain normal in myopathy until late in the disease. So what are the sequence of events? Action potential reaches the alpha motor neuron through the dorsal route. The alpha motor neuron is depolarized and action potential is generated. Action potential travels the efferent fibers and arrives at the neuromuscular junction and causes muscle contraction.